Adam, what's going on with the 30 truck? Yeah, a former winner here at Atlanta, and he cannot hear tr crew chief Mike Hillman Jr. We're talking about Todd Bodine. He can hear the spotter. Mike told him they would go back to the trailer and get an alternate helmet for him if they can't get the problem rendered between now and then. As of now, they plan to run all communications through the spotter. And the last thing Mike Hillman Jr. said to him, lead every lap, then it won't matter. We'll keep you posted on the situation with Todd Bodine. Communication issues early in the going here. And very critical here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, as I mentioned before, our last race here had 21 lead changes. Well, the most exciting lap that you talked about, Mikey, is about to get underway. Green flag flies from Atlanta. Ron Hornaday with a great start. Mike Skinner not giving him an inch as they go into turns one and two. Hey, neither one of those guys are going to back off that throttle all the way around this racetrack. Oh. Look at the inside. Kyle Busch makes the move to the inside on Mike Skinner. Hornaday moved up and took that outside lane away from Skinner and is going to parlay that move into leading this first lap. Hornaday works his way out of turn number four. Kyle Busch has stayed glued to the bottom of the racetrack. They race for second. It's going to be Skinner taking second. Hornaday will go across and get those five bonus points. You know, Mike Skinner is not going to be happy with how Ron Hornaday moved up the hill coming off of two on lap number one. Here, Dennis Setzer getting out of the gas as he rides very high on the racetrack. We ride along in his fast and all dodge. But you know, his hands were tied, Phil. He could not force the issue. He, Skinner took the, Hornaday took the line away from him. And then Kyle Busch took the spot away from Hornaday. Look at Hornaday fall back to third now as Skinner has moved up to second and Kyle Busch leads the race. It appeared to me there were some Chevrolets working together on that start. Kyle Busch got a great start, could have took them three wide into turn one, elected to push Hornaday out in front of Skinner, and now Hornaday said, okay, Kyle, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Have fun. Chevrolets working together. About a half a lap ago, there was a scary moment on the racetrack. Take a look at this. Oh. Josh Wise sideways with the help of Eric Darnell. He's, he's used to being sideways in his dirt car, but I bet that felt somewhat different at 170 mile an hour, Bill. You hear Josh have to get out of the throttle. I don't think there was any contact by that 99 of Eric Darnell. Josh just got a little bit loose up off that corner. Starting to spread out a bit on the racetrack now. They've They've given each other a little bit of space. We're seeing some of the drivers run way up high on the racetrack. That's a big surprise. That's Brendan going up there. That's not for Chevrolet. <laughs> we I, always I, see Brendan up high. By the way, Phil, it took him a half a lap to get there. <laughs> it's Kyle Busch out in front of Mike Skinner, Ron Hornaday running third. Busch now has put almost eight-tenths of a second on Skinner, so almost a second behind is Mike Skinner already as we've only completed four laps. You know, the top four runners right now have all won Craftsman Truck Series races here in Atlanta. Kyle Busch, Mike Skinner second, Hornaday third, and Tabo Ryan have all won here at Atlanta. Regan Smith falling back behind the double zero of Josh Wise. Tony Rizzuti, what's happening with Josh? Well, Rick, Josh told me after his qualifying run that the truck was very loose and it was something that he would be concerned about during the early goings. He felt like as the run went on, it'd be okay. He came across the radio and said, I really need to run up high in turns one and two, and I'm not able to get up there, and that's making the truck loose. He's right on the bottom in three and four, but he's finally gotten up to that high groove that he's been looking for. And he about got in the way of Regan Smith when he tried to get up into that high group. Yeah, yeah, just a couple moments ago, he moves up the racetrack. Regan was really paying attention there, backed off. Then Josh realized he was there, and, and uh, they didn't make any contact. Watch this from the onboard of that Aaron's Dream Machine. See, Josh is going to move up the racetrack. Regan's right there. Regan jumps out of the throttle and gets on the brakes. Avoid contact. And that, that dog on the, on the deck lid there was glad about that. <laughs> Caught his breath. That's the lucky dog, and... Josh was lucky there that Regan had his game on. Regan could have very easily caused an accident right there, but he elected to, to give Josh a break early in the race, and that's just a smart move. It's a battle for the 17th position right there. That's Brandon Wood in their one Toyota. There's Jacques Villeneuve in the 27 Bill Davis Toyota. They're battling right now for the 17th position. We talked about the battle for the championship. When the race started, it was 11 points that separated the two. Well, now Skinner has moved in front of Hornaday. That's a five-point difference, but Hornaday has led a lap, so that five points canceled out. Guess what the point difference is? 
11. I'm getting confused. I don't know. <laughs> We've completed eight laps of racing from Atlanta Motor Speedway of the 130 scheduled. It's Kyle Busch in front of the field. Tomorrow you're not ready for the green flag until you see NASCAR Race Day built by the Home Depot. Tune in as the Race Day crew gets you pumped up for Atlanta. Don't miss NASCAR Race Day built by the Home Depot tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern, live exclusively on Speed. Aerial coverage provided to you by Goodyear for track-tested technology. Get there on Goodyear Innovation. Is Krista still up there, you think? I think she's driving the Goodyear oh, bus right now. Okay. The spirit of innovation. What a great view, though, from that uh, that Goodyear blimp on this terrific Atlanta Motor Speedway. Speaking of a great view, out his windshield, he doesn't see anything. <laughs> but lap trucks, he's already lapping some trucks. And he can look in the rearview mirror and can't find anything either. He's set sail. Hornaday has closed in on Skinner. He has a faster truck than Mike right now, but they both pale in comparison to this cat. Right around the top of the racetrack, Phil. Yeah, all the way around the top of the racetrack. There you see second, third right there, Mike Skinner. And Ron Hornaday, that is our point battle for 2007. Ron Hornaday has his five points for leading. Mike Skinner doesn't yet. Does it surprise you guys that we're already two seconds off the pace? As you see a pass right now for second, Hornaday takes it away from Skinner. But we're two seconds off the fastest lap they ran. We don't. We don't. We're not surprised by that at all. That's why this track is so much fun to race on. You run those breakneck speeds on new tires, but as soon as the tires go away, you start searching for grip. Remember, Rick, they qualified right on the apron, right next to the right. bottom of the race racetrack, trying to find the shortest way around for speed. Now look at them. They're doing the opposite. They're up at the top right. just looking for a little grip. You see the color of the surface? When this racetrack was paved, it was black. When this surface is this light like it is now, it's a lot like Darlington and Rockingham. That means the surface is losing its grip, and that's why these trucks are running a couple seconds off, but they qualified it. Ron Hornaday has gotten by Mike Skinner, so now Hornaday will try to catch up to Kyle Busch, who is really setting a blistering pace, but Hornaday ran just a tick faster than he did on the last lap that they ran. And he did that while passing Skinner, so... That, that Hornaday truck's really fast, and, and those trucks are set up diversely different, Phil. The, the Hornaday truck is coil-bound. That means the front end's right down on the road, and Skinner has a more conventional setup, and uh, it's interesting to see one working well and the other going away like that. You really, we really showed that during our qualifying show today. I mean, probably three or four inches up higher down the straightaway for that five truck of Mike Skinner with that conventional setup. You see Mark Martin right there. What a move he has made. He started back in the 15th spot already has that Bubba Burgers forward up into the sixth position in his last start from the truck series in 2007. And this is just what these guys really wanted to see, Phil. 18 green flag laps in a row here. They're going to get that caution, competition caution at about lap 30. They did not want to run 10 and get a caution and then figure out what they wanted to do at that point. They wanted to run a bunch of laps in a row so they could see what these tires were doing. Adam Alexander, I'm guessing that uh, that 51 of Kyle Busch is hoping that the tires are wearing pretty consistently. And one of the things he's talked about on the radio is tires. You know, early in the race when Skinner was right behind him, he came over the radio and said, the tires have enough junk on them right now that if he wants to lead that bad, I'm not going to race for position this early. Since that time, he has put distance between himself and then Mike Skinner, now Ron Hornaday, who has taken over the runner-up spot. Bush not even running this thing at full throttle. He said, I want to be patient in the early going. Little doubt, the 51 solid here at Atlanta today, Tony. Mike Skinner was very quiet on the radio for the first 15 laps, but then the truck started to go away. He came across the radio, told his crew chief, Jeff Hensley, that his Toyota Tundra has become very, very loose. That's why Hornaday got the position. Skinner just assigned to just ride along and wait for that competition caution. So Mike Skinner fighting his ill-handling truck early on in this race. Look at the trucks we've got here at Atlanta Motor Speedway running so close together. Regan Smith, Brian Scott in that number 16, Willie Allen in the 13, Regan Smith in that 47. Nice job by Brian Scott early in this race, Bill. He's drove up around a bunch of trucks. Yeah, Brian started back in the 21st spot. Look, looks like he just took over the 15th spot that time. There's Joey Clatton at 09. We talked about him early in the show. Regan Smith, the 47. Brendan up there at the top of the racetrack and the groove he likes so much up there. Michael, you're another guy that like, likes to run the top of the racetrack. I like to go wherever I can make my stuff stick. And a lot of times, no one else is up top. You can get a good bite up there. Uh, but right now, you see Hornaday, he's dedicated himself to the bottom. 
uh, the leader to the top. It's all over the place. Go wherever you want. And Ron Hornaday is actually gaining some ground on our leader, Kyle Busch. Kyle had almost a two-second lead a few laps ago. And now it's been cut down to about a half a second lead. Yep. Watch these guys. See, they're two distinct different lines. One high, one low, and both of them working just fine. This lap truck will make a difference uh, ever so slightly in Ron Hornaday's line as he goes into turn three and four. Yeah, Ron can, can run that high line, so lap, lap trucks really don't affect the racing here as much as we, we saw at Martinsville last week because you have options. You can go around the high side, you can go around the middle of the racetrack or whatever. So they don't have as much of an effect here as they do on a short track like Martinsville where it's hard to hard pass. Half a second separates Kyle Busch and Ron Hornaday. Hornaday chasing the truck up the racetrack. Kyle Busch continuing to go by slower lap traffic. I'm comfortable going fast. I'm comfortable slowing down. I'm comfortable in Wrangler. Introducing Relaxed Straight Leg and Relaxed Boot Fit from Wrangler Jeans Company. New fits, new styles, great comfort. Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. Through November 16th, stay two nights. Stay two nights. Use your MasterCard card. MasterCard card. Earn twice the rewards. Twice the rewards. Twice is nice. Very nice. Go to bestwestern.com. At Fastenal, we're more than America's largest supplier of fasteners. We provide brand name tools to get your job done. Visit Fastenal.com for a store near you. Want speed in HD? Switch to Direct TV. Welcome back. Side by side for the lead on the inside. It's Ron Hornaday outside. It's Kyle Busch in the 51 as they come to the stripe. This is for the lead of the race. Ron Hornaday was able to get by Kyle Busch and it looked as though he was going to make the pass stick. But then Kyle Busch was able to run back on the high side and get back past him. Mikey, as you talk about, you see Ron Hornaday stuck to the white line down there. Kyle Busch keeps his momentum up, up on the outside. That time he was able to hold off that 33 truck, but just a few moments ago, the 33 truck actually made the pass for the lead. Here comes Ron Hornaday back on the bottom of the racetrack, trying to take that position away again. Again, we have a competition caution that's going to come out around lap 30, so we're about two laps away from that happening as these two continue side by side for the lead. And that truck just ahead of, them, ahead of them up there is Jack Sprague, so he's, he's probably happier than anyone that this caution's getting ready to fall because he can get to pit road and work on that Conway Freight Toyota. Look at these guys. Look at <laughs> Kyle's going to go to the inside. Give that a try one time. It's like it's the end of the race. Kyle Busch just stuck back inside, took the position back away from Ron Hornaday. And Hornaday's smiling right now, though, Phil. He's running 30 laps on that truck, and he's fast, and he knows it. He's going to come to pit road, adjust it, and he's got a really good feeling about his race today. Is Ron Hornaday right now saying, okay, that kid is going a little bit crazy for this early in the race. Is he backing off a little bit? I'd say absolutely not. I'd say Ron Hornaday has not backed off. He wants to lead that race. He, he would love to lead the, lead the most laps. He, he knew that kid was crazy when they started. <laughs> he didn't have to see the way he was going to drive to prove it. Adam, what are they talking about on the radio? And mute would be the word to describe the radio, Rick. Ron Hornaday's been very quiet, but I can tell you this. After starting on the pole and dropping back to third, there was no concern. And the reason why? Because yesterday after practice, this team felt very comfortable with their truck on the long run. Winning the pole today, just a bonus. And as you can see, as this run's continued, that 33 truck has dug in and gotten after it. It is amazing how what a pleasure it is to drive a truck that's driving like that 51 of Kyle Busch or that 33 of Ryan Hornaday. You see all these good trucks right here going a lap down. They just put Sprague a lap down. That's Willie Allen. They're putting a lap down. It's amazing the pace they're set on. There's David Starr getting ready to go a lap down. Well, David Starr might get lucky here as the caution is about to come out. There is the caution flag. That's the competition caution we were expecting around lap 30. It came out just at the end of lap 30 as they cross the start-finish line. The person that would have gotten lucky or not right now is Josh Weiss in that double zero Aaron's Dream Machine truck. He had been lapped, but Kyle Busch had just driven up beside Justin Martin in that 03 Toyota, and the caution flew. It'll depend where they cross the scoring markers, Phil, as to whether Justin Marks was a lap down and gets the lucky dog, or Josh Weiss receives it in his lucky dog Aaron's truck. Up oh, there he is. Aaron's lucky dog going to the 
Aaron's dream machine. Double zero of Josh Wise. So that, he'll that get back on the quite well. Everything's right with the world now, right? Yeah, it all makes sense to me. <laughs> End of Daryl at home.